Hi, and welcome back to The Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy, and my not-so-better half, Peter Crouch. This week, we're live from sunny Portugal. We're on holiday with the kids, so we thought, why not do a podcast here and, you know, just fill you in on what goes on on a Crouch holiday. The thing about going into the airport is like, it's the going through just me and Ab, it is much more of a breeze. She's still stressed out. But like with four kids is, you know, yeah. uh, it is carnage, isn't yeah. it? Like the amount of stuff we have. Like oh, it's what is that bag that you, why can't you just have a backpack? Why do you have to have a bag that you hold with so much stuff in it? Like a hand luggage. I've got change of clothes for the kids. I've got baby wipes, I've got food, I've got snacks, I've got iPads, I've got games, I've got colour and pencils, colour and books. That's why the bag's so heavy. Yeah, but what I'm saying is because it's a heavy bag, why don't you have a more practical bag? Well, that's what I wanted to get in Chanel, the, the really no, Chanel bag. No, no. What Chanel's <laughs> well known for, the practicalities. <laughs> yeah. So practical, isn't it? And the worst thing was like, I thought, you know, we're going on holiday. I want to look nice. I had this gorgeous cream suit on. My pet hate is when you get in, a, in the back of a cab and they have a box of chewies <laughs> and all the kids are like screaming for a chewy and I don't let them have chewing gum. So let them have it. Then next minute I've sat in the chewy. So I had chewy all over my ass. Then the kids all wanted like chocolate croissants. So I had chocolate all over me. Chewy stuck to my ass. I love like when Ab goes on holiday, like she looks incredible. Like... When we get when we're on, on the way to That's the so airport, true. no, that is on true. She, she looks like Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> oh, and then we get on the plane, and she's it's, <laughs> she's got like milk down her top. There's chewing gum on the ass. Uh, you know, prints all around my legs. <laughs> dirty chocolate. nappy in the bags so she stinks as well. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, oh, I feel, I do feel for you. In that. Yeah, but this, is, this is normal though. But the, the one thing, when we when we um got on the plane, so we we have all of this commotion getting to the to the airport, and the kids were great, even though I was covered in chewing gum and chocolate and cups of tea. You know, get on the plane, and oh, the kids were impeccable. And I have this real thing, and I know it's probably really bad to say, but that smugness of when someone else's kids are acting really acting mm. up and ours are so good and I'm looking at them going control your kids look mm. at ours you're you've sm- got one you've got one and it's behaving disgracefully and look at ours we've got four it's the, just in one look it's that one look of like, like this. look at our four but then obviously the flip side of that you have it the other way where one of ours is kicking off and, and there's a you know a couple with two like who are reading or something and you're like yeah oh, Harry good. Potter yeah Harry Potter like in it's you know a massive in French, in French. <laughs> And like it is, it's a nightmare, isn't it? But you can't. What can you do? You can't control them, can you? No. Well, you can't. You, you know, sometimes they just go. They've gone. But to be honest, our kids don't kick off really, Pete. No, no, they're they're very, very good. They're very good. I, I love her. Do you remember that time we were on the flight and that woman screamed at her baby? But I get it. I can see why. I get it. I, I felt so sorry for this woman. The baby cried, and when I say cried, screamed. It's the whole plane, hours. you know, in the whole plane. And everyone was like saying stuff to the mom. And I really felt for her actually, like, because I've been there myself when you're at that breaking point and you're like, and she she went, she, she'd she had picked enough. the baby up and went, shut the fuck up! And threw the baby at the dad and the whole plane just went completely silent. Yeah, that was, that was mad. It was, it was um, quite traumatic because it's, there's nothing worse than that, isn't it? When you're already stressed, you're, you know, you're on the plane and kids acting like a little monkey. But you've made it all yeah, safe and sound and in one family unit by the skinny teeth, by the sound of things. Yeah. How's the how's your week been so far? Well, it's been it's been lovely. Yeah, it's been it's been really nice. Like it's nice to get away as a family, isn't it? Like yeah. I, I laugh and joke about it, you know. But our kids are very very good. Yeah, I love it. You know, especially you know when you're at home and you Pete's so busy working and I'm busy and you've got you know the whole routine of school and after school clubs and homework it is nice to come away and spend time with the family and have a great time and do really great things that like we've been doing like you know what we've been to the beach we love going down to the beach at like five o'clock and the kids playing in the sea and there is that there is that thing that I would think about on holidays as well like the first day is when you get hammered <laughs> and why why is I, th- I think it's a very British thing that it's you get totally so a British thing you get so excited you come away and just drink far too much on the on the first day, no matter if you're with your family, if you're on a boys' trip or girls' trip, doesn't matter where you are, you always go for it too much. It's something about I think being British and 
the sun being out that you you tend to do that. And what about the airport pint? No. The, 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 like people go to like I see it like Gatwick, <laughs> yeah. and the Weatherspoons. People in the Weatherspoons at like six thirty a.m. I know. I know. Uh, and there's a. It's, it's, well, you'd do that if you were going on a golf trip and I get boring, Pete, I'll have a nice cup of tea, please. <laughs> no, because I've got a deal with you five children. Haven't I? I know what you mean, though. Yeah, if I was on a golf trip, I probably would. I probably would be. You wouldn't with... bat an eyelid at a 6am <laughs> pint if you were on a golf trip with your friends. Would, you, it, it would British... you have a 6am pint if you were going away with the girls? No, I wouldn't or, have or, a pint. Or not a pint. We'd probably have a drink, yeah. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> So the listeners have been in touch with their holiday questions and um, we're going to keep this as light-hearted as possible and depending on your answers, it might be the last holiday, family holiday you've come on. <laughs> Thank you very okay, much. Real. real, next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who has got the worst holiday outfits and we want some specific examples, please. Well, Pete's got great holiday outfits because I dress him. So, uh, uh, it's, it's true. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, does that mean you then up? <laughs> yeah, it means me. Because I'm normally covered in crap from the kids and I literally don't ever have any time to get ready. This, no, her outfits are amazing and she's got like so much stuff. It's like your stuff is on holiday, it's like small because it's bikinis and little bits, but this, it's so, you take so much stuff. I, I know. I have got an illness when it comes to packing. I have like, I start packing weeks in advance and then I think it's done. And then I just keep, adding in, adding in, and I, I literally can't stop myself until the case won't close. I'd like to ask, like, for the listeners, really, like, what, um, are there any, you know, are, are there wives like this? Do they start packing three months in advance and add, like, one outfit a day? But you know, you know why I do that? It's because, you know, we're so busy most days. I thought, I'll get a little bit done, a little bit done. So then it's not, a, like, a massive stress. I, I but come by home, doing like, that, I kind of just keep adding things in and I'm packing mm. going, I know I'm not going to wear this, but I'm putting it in anyway. But, but, yeah. Next yeah, question. It's difficult to comprehend. Adventure or beach holiday? Adventure. But I, I don't think you mean that. <laughs> what? So what adventure holidays do you go on? Oh my God, are you joking? Oh, yeah. We've been on so many adventures, horse riding on the beach. Yeah, but Scuba like, you, sorry, it wasn't a question like, would you rather an adventure holiday or a beach holiday? Yeah. Is that the, yeah. So you'd rather an adventure holiday? I actually would. <laughs> Which adventure would you like to go on? Well, I'd like to, I like sightseeing. I like seeing the local culture. I love going to, the, what? I love going to markets. Um, the horse riding on the beach, I absolutely loved when we got our scuba diving badges in. Ibiza, mm. that was incredible. When we went round Rome, Vatican, you know, and that, that's not really adventure, but I would, I would like to. I get bored just sitting here mm. on the yeah, beach. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, but like, I, I love, I'd love to do that as well. I just don't think, obviously, with the kids, it's like more beach vibes, isn't it? But, yeah, well, we're not at the age yet where we can go like. No, when they're a bit older, or... we can do, we can do a bit more of that. Right, this question here: uh, Who's the most scared of flying? Oh, God, me. Oh, yeah, Ab, yeah, definitely Ab. I'm not, like, um, amazingly... Like, I'm not, mate, but Ab is, is very nervous. Do you, remember, do you remember that woman when um, we, we were on this um, flight coming back from Portugal, actually, and it was very late, and me and Pete weren't sitting together, and I was so nervous about that, and it was still kind of in like the height of COVID. We weren't in lockdown, but all like the, the rules and regulation, masks, you know, social distancing, all that applied. And as the plane was about to land, it just shot right back up in the air. I, you could, I could feel it circling for a while and I could sense something dodgy was going to happen on this flight. And there was a man and woman sitting next to me and I was grabbing them, like crying, huggling them and they were pushing me off them because of COVID. <laughs> I was like, no, please, just hug me. I'm so scared. Just hug me. I'm so scared. And they were like, oh, COVID, get away. No way. But no, flying, I absolutely hate it. Don't I? Yeah, you're not, you're not a fan, are you? But oh. you very quickly forget with flying, I think. You, you, you go through it and you have a nightmare and then as soon as you land, it's like gone, isn't it? Yeah, I literally say a prayer every time we land. Like, thank God we're down. Yeah, she's made me. She's made me ring people at start flights to say if we if we go. Um, but you know, basically, you've you've had our kids signed over, haven't you? Like, yeah. If we if we travel if we're traveling without the kids, 
she'll make me make phone calls to make sure that their kids are, are with the right people. Bet your mates really look forward to that phone call. <laughs> 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 okay, next question. Most likely to cause an argument? Well, with that smirk on your face, I think you know full well. I think you're painting me out to be like this Babe, I, manic the... psychopath, angry fishwife. No, no. <laughs> That's what you are making me out to be. I, I'm not at all. You are? No, the, the question is simple. Who's likely to cause an argument? And we both know the answer. Cause That's... the argument? Well, it would be you. Well, no, create, create an argument. No, because I would react to you doing something bad. Yeah, so what... So what's the answer to that? So I've caused it by... You've caused it. But what, and, by being me? No, you're amazing, but some of your amazingness is sometimes too much and it winds me up. You know, some of your good points some at the, times are not good in certain situations. So like your laid backness, like generally day to day, I love it. But when you're laid back in a stressful environment, it drives me insane. But do you think that's why we work well together on most occasions? Because you're not like that and I am. And if you were with someone with the same sort of personality as you, that there might be a clash. Yeah, but we have got the same kind of personality. Yeah. No, but I'm talking about like, I am quite calm in those situations and you're very much not. But that's why it works, I think. And it might wind you up sometimes, but I think it, would, it does work better. Have I offended you're not, you? You're more likely to cause it. Why? <laughs> because cause, cause you cause most of the things. Are you mad? <laughs> no. You literally cause, you could cause a fight in an empty phone box. <laughs> okay, moving on. Well, you, you may notice that we've, um, we've got the same beverages, but we've got these glasses now. Do you want to explain why we've got these glasses now? Uh, do, do they need an explanation? Look at them. They're unbelievable. I could literally... Drink piss out of this glass because it's that nice and it still tastes good. <laughs> Honestly. It's literally... So you've literally just wanted to show these glasses off. Like, I've never had a beer in a glass like this in my life. Yeah, but look at the glass. It is spectacular. It is fantastic. It's like, I get so much pleasure out of these glasses. I, I can't even tell yet. It's you, like, it's like my plate dream. Yeah, would you like... I was going to say, would you like to tell everyone about your uh, your plate wet dream? <laughs> well, it, it, well, it kind of was a wet dream. About plates, though. You weren't in it. Oh, you were at the till waiting to, waiting to pay. I was at the till. He was, this is amazing. He, he this had is his incredible. card ready at the, at the till waiting to pay for them. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Because in Portugal, they have the most incredible, like, pottery paint, hand-painted. It's just absolutely beautiful. But this shop that I was in in my dream just had next-level plates. They were, like, double the size of any normal plate that you can get. This is phenomenal. Hand-painted. Like, they even had them, like, displayed on the walls. Like, and there was this... And just as I was about to get this platter off the wall, <laughs> you woke me up. <laughs> you and know I what? was fuming what? because I, I didn't even get a full glimpse of it. I, was, I just needed to take <laughs> it in a bit more. And you, you ruined it. I've never seen anyone so angry about getting woken up. I, I, you know, I, was, I just wasn't expecting it. She said, oh, I was in the best dream ever. And I was like, oh God, like, I'm sorry. She said, I'm just about to see this plate. And I went, excuse me? <laughs> he thought that I was having a big wild sex dream about him. <laughs> and I just wasn't. What? A plate? And she was going, yeah, I was in a plate shop and I was like, you, and you were fuming about getting woken up. <laughs> it was actually me and Holly Willoughby in the plate shop together. <laughs> really? Yeah. What a bizarre dream. It was amazing. But you've, that is literally like the best dream you've ever had, you, told, you said to me. Literally the best dream I've ever had. Phenomenal. You've never seen anything like these plates. What are they because like? Wiggly edges, like raw edges <laughs> and painted, but they were oversized. No, you can't mm. get like an oversized platter anywhere. You can't. They literally don't exist, especially with this design. Oh, it's, it does sound like a good dream. Anyway, we've been on some cracking holidays over yeah. the years. feel so lucky to have the experiences we've had. Mm. You know, there's been some mad things happen to us. Yeah, I like, I like, you know, like, we've been on some great beach holidays, like even before kids when we used to go on Mad Ones to Ibiza or um, those little city breaks when I used to get like two days off, like yeah. randomly, and we'd just go like Milan or Barcelona or Paris or somewhere just for a couple of days off. And that, those, they were just great times. Do you remember Barcelona where 
Like one of my favourite ones was Barcelona, where we just had a laugh, me and you it on our so own. Funny. Like such a laugh. And it's um, really difficult for you to walk around, especially in Spain or Italy, even Portugal, like where there's a massive football culture. We literally couldn't walk down the road without Pete getting stopped by everyone, like every second, could we? You were, you were playing for Liverpool at the time. Yeah, it was it, it was getting a bit much, and it, it was supposed to be like a romantic sort of city break. And um, but we we went past us. We'd had a few um, glasses of wine at lunch. We were feeling a bit giggly, you know, in that giggly kind of mood, and everything. Well, it was she also was also a new relationship. Yeah. So that's why we were giggling. No. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone was like, like we were. She, I was just looking at her and it was making me laugh. And then it was oh, just, thanks. no, you know what I mean? It was like, we were having so much fun. And we were walking through the park and then we went to, for a bit of shopping and we, kept, we wanted to sort of carry on drinking a little bit. We went past like a joke shop and we went in. Fancy and, dress shop. Like a fancy dress shop, yeah. And we bought wigs. And I, I don't think I've laughed so much in much of my but life. The, they were so funny because oh, they were so realistic. It wasn't wigs. like a joke wig. Like Peter had this big ginger quiff, <laughs> but it like fit him like a glove. It was you couldn't tell that you it was a wig. You didn't know. You didn't know like if, if it was real hair or not. It was it was amazing. And Av had a black bob <laughs> <laughs> with a fringe shimmer. Yeah. That was amazing. And then we just put them on and walked around Barcelona. And not one person no one asked came. him for an autograph once that wig was on. So we were like, this is perfect. But I think we were getting funny looks because we actually looked really strange. Well, we were laughing in people's faces as we walked down the road. Like, we found it hilarious, didn't yeah. we? And then we went for another, and we said we we're not allowed to take the first one to take it off, us to do a forfeit. So we were just walking around Barcelona in, in these wigs, weren't we? Yeah. It was one of the funniest days. It was funny. God, do you remember the um, Jumbra romantic boat trip in Sardinia? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't ideal. I, look, they, they did these boats at the um, at the hotel and you could take them little dinghies and I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to surprise her. Um, little bottle of champagne. I got some, the hotel to make us some sandwiches and um, we went out. Ali Ali. Uh, yeah, like some bread. It was like little picnics. So I thought, I'll take her out to a little deserted island and... We'll we'll go and uh, do it, but then we sort of we it was going all it was going well. I'd, I'd anchored down, and we were just out in the middle of the ocean. Anchored down, you know that's what I was. I was, what the I was hell? captain, Pop say. You know? yeah. uh, I was <gasps> I was starboard side, and Ab was uh, the other one. And <laughs> what? It's just, starboard side. It's just just boat stuff there. <laughs> Oh um, and we, we were out, and uh, anyway, it was going well. But then obviously we fell asleep, and the, by, by the time I woke up. There was people uh, shouting at us. The wind got up or something, you know, and we were getting pushed into, like, the rocks. And I remember the fellow with the big boat, remember, he said, what are you doing? Like, get your anchor up, go. It was a huge sailboat, wasn't there, with and a just big come mast. Down, didn't it? And the mast was getting blown right over. To, and when I say how tall it was, it was like a block of flats, the height of it. And it was getting, the whole boat was tipping over. And they were going, move, move out the way. And we couldn't get couldn't out. Get the anchor. Couldn't get the anchor up. Couldn't get it up. So basically, I'd got the corkscrew and I was just stabbing it um, to, rope, rope. to try and get the anchor because it was stuck under a stone or something and we were as it about to get blown into rocks. I'm stabbing this rope. Anyway, you managed to get through. It was blood everywhere, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, managed to get free and got off mm. and go back to the, um, to the hotel. And then obviously, I, I should have said to the, to the man who had the boat in, like, you know, there's no anchor on that one. But we decided to... Um, to sort of leg it, really. <laughs> so we went back into the hotel. And the next day, Jermaine Genus was staying in the hotel, same hotel as us. And he said, uh, oh, I went out one of those boats that you did. And I said, oh, yeah, great. Didn't you have a nice time? And he said, yeah, it was great until we tried to stop and there was no anchor. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. What about the, um, the weird swinger guy in Greece? Oh, that was Crete, wasn't it? That was an eventful trip, that Crete trip. You know, there was a guy there doing the water sports and each day we'd go and we'd go on the banana boat or the jet skis or whatever. And then one day, he looked like Wolf out the gladiators, didn't he? Did a bit, yeah. And then he was a bit, he was like, oh, I'd love to take you out to dinner, you too. But no threat, I didn't think at all. Do you know what, like, it didn't, it didn't cross my mind that he would be a threat to me. Like, he looked like Wolf from the Gladiators, is what I'm trying to say. It wasn't he was, like he, a... he almost looked like... Do you remember that that guy who was on The X Factor who looked a bit like Wolf? Oh, the German guy? The... No. Oh, Wagner. 
Exactly. How do you know his name? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He looked like, he looked I don't like know him. How just came slash to. wolf. <laughs> yeah, but we just thought, oh, what a nice old man. Yeah, that's not nothing of it. And then we thought, oh my God, we don't want to, we really don't want to go out for dinner with him, but we felt too rude not to. So we agreed. And then we sat in the lobby waiting for him this night. And he was like an hour late. So we were waiting and waiting. And then we thought, let's perfect. He hasn't turned up. We're just going to go. And just as we were leaving, mm. he turned up. So we were like, oh, fuck. Um, so we had the meal with him, which was fine when Pete was there. But when Pete went to the toilet, he starts like hitting, hitting on me and going like, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing with him? <laughs> She literally, he literally like was trying to throw me under the bus. He's going like, "What are you doing with him?" Like, uh, you were white as a ghost when I came back from the toilet. What? But I didn't. He didn't give me the opportunity to be alone with Peter, so I couldn't tell Pete. So at this point, we've had a few drinks, and then he's like, "Oh, want to take you back to my friends?" So and Pete's like, "Yeah, let's go." And I'm like looking at him like, oh, but couldn't. I was totally oblivious to the situation. Wagner was what he was trying to do. So next minute. <laughs> We arrive in the lion's den. Six um, couples in the 70s, all from like Leicestershire or bloody Leeds or something. They're like from Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Um, like something from Jeremy Kyle on white plastic um, chairs on this bloody veranda. And they were all drinking their own alcohol that they'd made. <sighs> and it's like, here's Susie from not, uh, Lancashire. And here's a fella, uh, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God. We literally just legged it out, didn't we, Pete? Well, I just thought, this is a weird vibe now. Like, that's when I got on it. And I was like, my God, what is going on here? But I don't know whether it was a swinging society. It definitely was, Pete. Like, people don't hang out on balconies, on like plastic white chairs, drinking homemade alcohol. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Them. I think they do. I think they've... They probably do. With the keys but, in the bowl. But yeah, I with the keys there was the definitely bowl. something sinister going on. And the fact that Wagner had taken us there is a telltale sign. I actually something... thought he was trying to get us, like, pissed. And then we'd... I, I think there was something in that alcohol, personally. I'm glad we didn't touch it. You know, because yeah. these things happen on holiday, don't they? Scary. Don't it's know what you don't know. You don't, don't know these people. No. I, I thought... Wagner that... went from no threat to triple threat in about... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was gross. It made me feel really sick. It's a strange old trip, that one. A lot of fun, though. I just remember us running down the hill. It was like cobbled streets, wasn't it? And he, he was like Wagner and fucking Graham were like shouting us on top of the hill, going, come back. One of the issues that we had, certainly when I was playing for England, stuff like that, is like people that wanted to take photos of us. Like, I was talking about people that want to take photos and put them in the paper. Paparazzi. Yeah. Like yeah. that has been a little bit... There's been a few incidents with I'm that. I'm still scarred for life when I look like bloody Romulus and Remus. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about St. Bart's. We were in St. Bart's. Yeah. I thought that was flattering, that one. But... Oh, are you joking? Do you know when you're like lying on your sunbed and all your towel gets like ruffled up? So I was like trying to fix, straighten out the towel, but I was like on all fours, pulling the towel up. And this pap had got me from the back. So like... But bum front. How do I explain that? Yeah, yeah. So he's got you from, from the Not bum. Not front bum, no. <laughs> no. No front bum. Bum <laughs> front. He's got bum you. front. Bum front. Bum front <laughs> has got to be the new word for it. Okay, so I'm on all fours fixing my towel. He's the shots from the back. Front bum or, or back bum? Back bum. <laughs> <laughs> back bum. And literally, I look like a pregnant dog with massive... Udder a pregnant milk dog. boobs. So my my boobs are like you could see my boobs from in between my legs, oh. and I look like a pregnant dog. It was the worst thing ever. Oh. I don't understand why someone would print a picture What's like that because it was just horrendous. Can you remember the headline? New mother feeds her pups <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> Yeah, so there's been a few few trials, but like it's got, it's one of those things where I think you sort of got to accept it a little bit, which is unfortunate. But you know, if you go down to the beach, you you might have to accept it. But there was one time in Carbo where we were in it, and I was, I just couldn't work out where because we were around the pool and it was quite a private, exclusive hotel. I thought someone around this pool is doing it because you can't get in there, so it must be one of the holiday makers. So anyway, I saw a fella with the camera 
this big camera, like big like a camera, professional paparazzi a camera. Professional camera, and I saw him in the pool. And you know where people do it a lot. Like if they, they pretend they're taking a picture of their friend or their wife, and you're in the, they've just got you in the back. So yeah. I knew that he was doing it. I knew he was right. And we'd been in the paper every day, and I couldn't work out why. And I was just had enough of it now because Ab was getting all self conscious, and that that is annoying because it's like we're on holiday. Should you be able to just relax and you know not worry and with that was starting to worry us because it was worrying Ab and she was getting worried and it was just so annoying. We've been on some so, holidays we haven't left the room because of paparazzi. Yeah, because just because And like, it's such a waste. It's just a waste. You could go anywhere in the world and stay in your room. Um, so anyway, this particular time, um, I said, right, I've had enough. I said to Ab, and I'm, listen, I'm not confrontational, but I said to Ab, look, I've had enough of this fella. And she was like, whoa. But I understand he's gone. why. He's lost it. Because ev- literally everywhere we went, this guy was next to us with his camera. So we go for lunch. He was there taking pictures of his wife. We were in the pool. The wife was standing next to me. He had the long lens out. We'd have a drink on the balcony. He was there, long lens out again, wasn't he? Yeah, it was, like, it was it no was... doubt in my mind. I had the fella. Mm. I had him. So he was in the pool and we are in sh- in this shot. There loads of them. His wife's obviously doing these various poses and we're in the back of every shot. And I'm thinking, that is him. I said, like, we watched him for a good five, ten minutes. Then we take loads of pictures of us. And I said, I'm not having this. I went into the pool, grabbed the camera off him and said, I've had enough of this now. Like, I know what you're doing. Anyway, I turned the camera around, proceeded to go through the uh, pictures. Oh, no. And then um, <laughs> every single one was of his wife, who's very beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> by, by waterfalls, um, in the pool, you know, at dinner. On that um, same, same um, veranda we were same at. Same veranda, yeah. I mean, like, all, every single one of them. We weren't in any of them. <laughs> it was one. so embarrassing. And he was like... So then people say, oh God, I'm so sorry. People say, I'm, it's just we've been in the paper every day and we couldn't work out who was taking the pictures. And the guy was like, well, who are you anyway? I've never even, don't it's even know American, who you are. I've American, never seen you. It's the American guy. They had no clue who who we were It was at all. so cringe. It was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. I, <sighs> I didn't know what to say to you. I just, said, You've got, I just handed the camera back and said, you know, you have a lovely wife. <laughs> but the thing is, because you've been like... You know, you're not a flashy person or you don't like, you know, court being famous or whatever. Mm. So for for you to do that anyway was like completely out of character and took a lot of guts because Mm. that's just not the type of person you are. So to to get it wrong and for him to be like, who the hell are you? It was just like... Literally the worst case scenario it was. Like I'd rather like have a fight with him. (laughs) You know, like for him to just go like, I haven't taken one picture of you, mate. Was crushing. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. That was when we 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 did the horse riding on the beach there as well. That was so annoying. My dream was to ride a horse on the beach, and Pete had booked it, and I just couldn't believe it. It was just incredible. So we started special. out. Mm. It was so special. That was, wasn't you it? Always, it was like you, she'd always said to me, like right early on, didn't you? Like I, you always wanted to do it, and we we did it. It was on my bucket list to do, ride a horse on the beach. And Pete, Pete's not into horses. He's not really into wasn't any animals. wasn't on my animals. bucket list, I'll be quite honest. But I did go through it. So Pete set it all up. We were riding on the beach. It was incredible. Living out a, a dream of mine that I've always had. You, you, just, you were riding. I was trying to stay alive. No, on the beach you were great. That's why you wanted to do it again so much. Yeah, like, I, I, I was okay. Like, I'm not a horse person am I really but I no. I did enjoy it it was good fun I got I got half a little canter on as well didn't I half a canter <laughs> yeah so the, he said I said oh Pete I love that so much can we do it again so he was like yeah no problem so the next day we went back to the stables and the guy said I've got a different route for you today do you want to go up the mountain so I was like oh yeah that sounds amazing so get there and then he brings out this horse for Pete. It wasn't the horse that we had the day before. It was literally like a giraffe-sized horse. It was humongous. And it was it looked young. It was frisky. It was just... The, it was like a skinny Shire horse. It was so big. I've never seen anything like it. It was like an abnormally sized horse. It was athletic as well, wasn't it? Like It was powerful, It looked like it was it? ready to go. But it was a baby. You could tell it was a baby, couldn't mm. you? So um, we go on the horses start our trek up the mountain. I was with the cowboy. He was so cool, like doing all tricks on his horse and Pete was just in the background, like, <laughs> plodding, hanging on for dear life. Plodding, plodding along. 
And then... Um, There's various men hitting on app while I'm like in the background. No, sure, I think we're hens. But we, oh, just, we just like, had a, we communicated so well just through our love of horses. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> what the hell are you saying? We connected so well I didn't say we, we through our love of horses. We communicated so well through our love of horses because he couldn't speak English, Pete. And I definitely can't speak Spanish. Anyway, while they were connecting fantastically well through the love of horses, <laughs> I was getting left with not have a clue what I was doing on my on my beast of a horse. <laughs> I was doing some little dressage um, tricks with this guy. And he was showing me on his dressage horse and I was tricks. doing it. And then the next minute, Pete's horse just bolted out of nowhere and ran up the mountain. <laughs> And the drop, was, it was like a sheer drop, I hundreds thought, of I, feet. I was, I was holding onto its neck. You know, like I wasn't holding onto, I had no, reins had gone. I'd, I'd, I'd lost all control of what the man had told me to do. I was literally holding its neck and it was running. Julio. And I literally was going, well, I'm dead. We're on a cliff. <laughs> so then Julio, um, he, he just turned into full cowboy mode, got the... Got the lasso, swung it round, lassoed Pete off the horse, dragged him off, flicked Pete onto his own horse, and while well, Pete was like hysterical, crying. I was in, I was in, I was very scared. I know that. <laughs> he was never, I've never been so scared. I had a tear rolling down my cheek. I thought, I thought it was over. I thought it was over. Maybe that was his plan. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't. Yeah, I've never been on a horse since. You actually have. Oh uh, yeah, once it threw me off as well, didn't it? Where was that? No, when I did that ad. The <laughs> 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 man, said, man said, look, you can jump on its back. He was jumping on its back. And I went, oh, it looks, looks pretty safe. Got on it, threw me straight off. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something unnerving for a horse when it sees someone the size of a horse. <laughs> yeah. Get on its back. With the same teeth. <laughs> With the same teeth. <laughs> <I'm> Trigger. <laughs> I'm joking, babe. Funny. But no, we've been on good we've been on some amazing holidays. I know we're joking and we're only telling like our... What's your favourite holiday that we've been on? Oh. Do you know what I love apart from you getting sick was Rome is a good place, isn't it? But then you got... Do you mean getting sick? Do you mean pregnant? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined it because I was sick. <laughs> getting sick. He was fuming with me because we, oh, I, I cancelled dinner. You're who's painting a bad light of people now? Yeah. Of people? <laughs> like, <laughs> of Peter? Like... No, you were fuming. We were supposed to go out with... I wasn't fuming at all. I wasn't dinner fuming. With I was just, and I was just that you were sick. He was huffing and puffing at me because I, I was vomiting my guts up because I was pregnant. No, because it was just... I just loved Rome and I, just, I was gutted that we had to stay in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Such. I was gutted. Like you were gutted as well. Like it wasn't. It was just bad timing because Rome was is is an amazing place. But the thing is, you could, you know, when you're pregnant, Pete, you can't control her. So no, I think a lot of things. A lot of the, a lot of the time, I get asked. You know, you've been together 16 years. You've got four kids. How do you keep the spark alive? And I I I kind of feel qualified in that front because. I know we're joking and taking the pee out of each other now, but we are still madly in love. Well, I am anyway. Uh, no, I'm totally in love with you. Like, I absolutely adore you. But I think that is half the reason why we are strong, because we can take the piss out of each other. Like, that's what I do. If I go to the pub with my mates, I take the, we take the piss out of each other. We have a laugh. But mm. I can do that with you. And I fancy you. <laughs> rather than like my pals, so I don't. Like, so, well, well, you did tell me once that you wanted to, you would prefer to be married to Glenn Johnson. No, I just said, I just said that. <laughs> what I said was like, if I was that way inclined, it'd be easier because if he was, you know, like we've got so much more in common. Like we like playing golf. We, we watch football together. <laughs> what I'm saying is I just don't unfortunately fancy him. I don't fancy Glenn <laughs> you don't fancy Glenn Johnson. There's a lot of people out there. I know, who do. I know there is. No, but no, I, I because just this not, all that's come not about. My cup this, of tea. this all come about when he was like, "God, girls are a pain in the ass." Like, if you forget the birthday, that the moaning at you. If they, if they don't take you out on a nice date, the moaning at you. The Whereas mo Glenn would just go like, "Don't worry about that, mate. Just get me something next time." <laughs> <laughs> 
that's what I'm trying to say. It's like it is easier if 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 you were on the same page. Like you know, let's it. Like if, I, if Ross said to me, um, you know, I, just, I forgot our anniversary. He goes, we should go out for dinner. We go out for a meal later or something. Like that's you. Whereas it is a problem for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. But well, I, I think if I was married to one of my friends who's female, <laughs> it would be so much easier. Because would, they would be so saying. thoughtful. Exactly. They that's would like, saying. you know, gifts. They would they would come up with the most thoughtful gifts. I'm not saying like expensive, expensive, lavish gifts, like thoughtful things. They would do lovely look like like the time when you bought me that fucking tom tom. <laughs> <laughs> so Pete bought me a tom tom. This is before sat navs were uh, involved. It was early um, days. Like everyone's got invented. sat nav now, phones and stuff. Yeah. But like this is when you needed a tom tom, you know? And There's I no such thing as sat nav then. Great gift. Or, 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 I don't even think you had iPhones then, did you? I don't know. Well, you must not have. We were, it was just before we were engaged and um, I thought, God, Pete's bought this Tom Tom. He's going to put in a romantic location. He's going to make me drive there. Then he's going to propose to me. So he's like, he's going on and on. Come on, let's take, let's give this um, Tom Tom a little test drive. So we get in the car and just like drove down the road and then went back home. I was like... I genuinely did test, <laughs> test the Tom Tom. I was genuinely testing it. And, so then, and I came so back I and I went, like, amazing, eh? What do you but, think? <laughs> but, if you, but if you were a female, you would have thought of that. Uh, you, you would have gone, do you know it, with what? With hindsight, it's a wonderful thing. It, that is an amazing idea, yeah. We do have this thing where we laugh in situations instead of kicking off. You know, we do laugh at things, don't we? And go, if you don't laugh, you cry. I genuinely have the best time with you. Like... It will, all the time. I, I, we laugh, belly laugh. We have loads of fun. Like, I love you. You're caring, you know, you've got, you're amazing with the children. You know, you're so loyal, you're so honest. Um, there's loads of things that I, I really, really do love about you. And what don't you like about me? There's, there's bits, but, you know, you can't, no one's perfect. <laughs> but the majority of the time, you are, you're awesome. Thank you. So, so leading on to my, um, do you want me to say something nice back to you? No. <laughs> so basically what I'm trying to say is, you know, I think we qualify to give some advice, some relationship advice. This is the whole point of the therapy crouch. You know, we've been together 16 years. We've got four kids. We're happy. We love life. We had so much fun together and we feel we're in a position to help others. So I've come up with this concept to be your agony ab. You know, our listeners have been writing in and we're going to be here to help them solve their relationship woes. That's correct, Abby. Um, and I've got lots of uh, emails in already. Okay. Uh, and I'll read them to you and we can help them through it because um, we're advanced at this stuff. You know, we're good, we're good at this stuff. We can help. Got it. So Mark31 from Colchester says, uh, I've been seeing the new girl from the office for about a month now. I'm well aware that I'm punching but she seems keen for some reason. And I'm not in a hurry to mess things up as I normally do. I must inform you that my current nickname among my close friends is the Brown Horn. And this is not down to the fact I'm a grade A on the clarinet. For ultimate transparency, <laughs> I no longer wear white boxes in fear of a repeat of Iron Apple 05. Ugh. I now find myself holding in agon agonizing gas bombs for several hours at a time and this can't go any on anymore as I fear for my own internal safety. <laughs> this, is, this is a wordsmith, this fella. We've been getting on like a house on fire and I'm pretty worried a gas leak could blow the roof off this relationship. Ah! How should I uh, approach this unfortunate biological defect <gasps> as I'm afraid I can't hold this in anymore, quite literally? Oh my God! One of the best emails I think I've ever heard, I've ever read out. <laughs> Sounds like he writes for Fizz. <laughs> well, I I actually can't help him with this one because my anyone who knows me knows that my biggest turn off in a person, including children, is farting. I cannot handle it. Yeah, so I I I'll be honest with you, Mark. I've been through this. <laughs> Uh, so I am very, have. very qualified in this area. It's just a case of getting some alone time. Uh, just make sure you get yourself some alone time to to unleash hell um, in the bathroom or um, outside. <laughs> outside. No, because it's not right. You know, a man shouldn't have. 
I shouldn't have to hold at all women shouldn't have to hold in um, you know as he as he described it agonizing gas bombs for several hours at a time it's not healthy it's not healthy and I, I feel for him I really do but I can't handle farting as you're saying we, we are very much in this boat we you are know, in the, well, he's how saying do you that, deal with it yourself then because no, what I'm saying is he he's been seeing the new girl and he is Everyone's aware that he's punching. He doesn't want to mess things up. That is exactly our situation. And you don't like farting. And I had to hold it in for a long time. So where did... But I, this is God's honest truth. I think I've heard Pete fart once in 16 years. No, that's not true. There's been There's been farts. No. There's been farts, there are, but no. but I, I do try and hold it in for you. Still, though? You still do it? I do, that's I, so good. I do try. I do... You know, it's something that turns her off. Do I want my wife to be turned off? No, so I will try my very best to hold it in. No, because I just don't think there's any... You don't need to fart in front of people. So where do you go to um, pass gas? <laughs> <laughs> where do I go? It's not something that I... I, I, I don't want to, like, create a Dutch oven in the bed. Uh. You know? I... Yeah, I, I would, I would, you know, go to the toilet. Or, you know, I don't, I don't consciously do it. I just try and hold them in for you as much as possible. Well, do you get bellyache? No, no, it's not. It's not been a huge issue. But Mark sounds like he's really struggling, and um, I, I don't think. I, I just think he should be um, careful with where he drop he drops his bombs. <laughs> he should just go in the garden like a dog. <laughs> where do you, like you don't fart though, either, do you? Like you know. absolutely not. But you must you must fart away from me. I don't. Where do you go? I actually don't. Where fart. do you drop your bomb? I don't. <laughs> I genuinely don't. I'm just not a gassy person. You hide number twos from me as well, don't you? I, 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 do, I don't do that either. <laughs> I put a cork in it. Ugh. It's, I, it's just... That's um, not healthy. You, got, you do, obviously you do, but like just... You do, don't do it in front of me. It's just not... It's just not... Like children's poo, I do not mind. But adult feces, just no thanks. But I poo in front of you. You went fast, but you'll poo. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Well, I'm allowed to poo in front of you, but not fart. You're not allowed to poo in front of me. Pete. We're getting into all the actually, uh, all, yeah. the, all the all the questions that this people need to hear. Yeah. You're actually not allowed to poo in front of me, but if I'm in the shower and you come in and have a poo, I which is so in. rude. I don't come in. It's actually so rude that you do that, and I'm like, I why don't... are you doing that? And you're like, because I just want to talk to you while you're in the shower, and while you're having a number two numero dos next to me. <laughs> no thanks. I think that's true love. Every, everyone in our house does it. The kids. I'll be getting a nice bath on my own. They'll come in and have have a poo. Well, war three. It's just awful. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of doing that to anyone. Even the cat litter trays in our bathroom. It's like poo literally room. a shit house. <laughs> shit house. Got another one here for you, uh, Abby. I'm currently a single male who finds himself in a bit of a predicament. A few years ago, I met this seemingly lovely local lass who I initially thought was a bit of me. A few dates in and cracks started to appear. When I say cracks, I mean more that she was an absolute cracking pot. Uh, I tried to call it off a couple of times. She was too persistent, wouldn't take no for an answer. Eventually, me and the lads decided to stage my death so that she would stop hounding me. I now feel really guilty about this and can only imagine she was really distraught considering doing a Jesus number. A Jesus what? I'm considering doing a Jesus number and resurrecting myself to make things right. What do you think? As Tom from Stafford. Oh my God. Poor what? Tom. A, what? He's <laughs> his death. That is outrageous. I wow. Actually, I actually know someone else who's done that. What, pretended to be dead? Why can't you just say I'm moving away? Do you think he should resurrect himself? Um, yeah. You I do. think honesty is the best policy. I think he should just come clean and be like... I'm not dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> it was an insurance job. He could just... Um, but he could like... This could like have the... I don't think that any good. I don't think any good is, will come from him being alive again. No, because then he could do. He could work a little bit of re reverse psychology on her now, and he could be like, "I'm alive," and then she'll be like, "Oh my god, he's a psycho," and then she won't want to go near him, and then that's job done. 
and then he doesn't have to live in fear that he might spot her in the local yeah, but if she is shop a bit or whatever. Of a loon, if she's a bit of a loon, like he said, I don't think she's going to react well to to him being alive. <laughs> I don't think it's for for all concerned. She's had a little cry. She's over it now. Uh, I think we all move on. But he can't be dead forever. Excuse me. <laughs> he can't pretend to be dead forever. Well, it depends if he sees her around. Silly boy. Yeah, I think if if, if you're in a, still in a local area and there's a chance of her bumping into you, then I think maybe come clean. But for now, if you're gonna if you're not gonna see her again, I think it let let sleeping, sleeping dogs let lie. sleeping tom's lie. <laughs> <laughs> right, Abby. Uh, we have one uh, last one there. This is Jordan, 27. He's originally from Liverpool, but lives in uh, in Hackney. He says, um, I am newly single off the back of a 10-year relationship with my childhood sweetheart. We both changed as people and decided to go our separate ways. I was completely faithful. And she's my first love and, my, and to date my only lover. I'm now 27. I've decided that the newly single Jordan should be wild and adventurous. Uh, and so I've downloaded a dating app called Field, which is basically Tinder for kinky people, a side of myself which I'm yet to explore. Yeah? My first date is with someone a bit more experienced than me. She has invited me to join her at uh, what she describes as a kinky rave, which I have agreed to. Uh, I've agreed to attend as I'm trying to get my body count in double figures before the next 10-year relationship. What does that mean? I think he's trying to explore... Body count? Does he, <laughs> does he mean he wants like... <laughs> Loads of sexual partners. I think he wants to explore sexual partners before settling down. Uh, ahead of the rave, she sent me some pictures of her PVC outfit, which I must say she looked rather scrumptious in, uh, and suggested to me that I buy some similar attire to fit in with the sexually adventurous party ravers. Having absolutely no fashion sense in the civilian world, I feel so out of my depth when browsing leather harnesses and arseless chaps. Arseless chaps. I was hoping uh, you, you as a couple could maybe pr discuss my predicament and share some advice. Wow. Oh, God. So he's going to a kinky rave. He's a little bit unsure about it. Um, but I think he's... I'm the wrong person to ask. I'm, I'm more of a um, get in bed at 9pm with nice freshly showered with my cream on with four chocolate rice crispy cakes and a cup of tea kind of gal. No, no harnesses or arseless chaps. <laughs> the only harness I've ever used is one to clip my baby onto me. <laughs> So where do we go here, babe? Because this is the therapy crouch and all questions raised will be answered. I don't, I'm not one to judge. Whatever floats your boat. If you want to be into that kinky stuff, that's completely fine by me. But he, he's willing to, you know, he's willing to try something different. I think that's something, you know, our listeners should be willing to do. You know, like go explore your horizons. He doesn't know who he is yet, you know. We're in a loving relationship. We're happy. But he's not yet. He hasn't found his one and this one. He might need to do this to sort of get it out of his system. So where, you know, should he feel embarrassed going into um, a kinky shop and, and buying leather? No, I don't think he should. I think there's room for everyone in this world. Mm. And whatever floats your boat, and I genuinely believe that. Mm. Do you think he should go more conservative? He could wear leather, but not so much, you know, crotchless. It could be just no, it won't be leather kinky. pants. It won't be as no, he, could, he could wear like leather pants. Yeah, but I wear leather pants and I don't consider them kinky. Yeah, but I feel like he, if he's going in there, he might as well go more... If it's his first one, he doesn't want to go straight in with the crotchless and no, I, I, arseless. No, I think he should just go full in. Go, just go for it. I, I just think own it. Do you remember when I bought that outfit for our Valentine's night once? Mm. <laughs> Do you know this? And um, I bought like this kinky like body, like PVC body. And I thought, oh yeah, we'll wear it for Valentine's. And I hid it in my room. I was obviously still living with my mum at the time. This is when we'd first come together. Yeah. And um, our Ellie came down it as a baby, didn't she? Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Remember? Yeah, remember you telling me. So she put it, she came on, came down with this like, I think that was crotchless as well, actually. She came down <laughs> in this PVC crotchless bodysuit and it had like all frills on the bum and like frills on the bust. I remember it well. And I nearly <laughs> died. I think it's sensible that Jordan wants to explore explore and experience some life. He's been in a, a long-term relationship, which unfortunately hasn't worked out. And sometimes things can become a bit stagnant and a bit stale. Mm. And I don't blame him for wanting to reinvent himself and broaden his sexual horizons. Fantastic advice, Abby. <laughs> well, that's the agony, Abby. I would like a pick 
of Jordan in his outfit. Oh, yes, please, Jordan. If you could send that in for next week, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, I hope it all goes well. Uh, let us know if you go uh, full uh, ball in mouth. <laughs> <laughs> or like a rubber ball or human ball? <laughs> Potentially both. Um, we'd love to see some uh, some footage of that. Please send in your pics. So, we're not going to do the weekly wine club this week because I'm on my holidays. I'm feeling good. I don't want to be doing any more moaning. What do you think? Sounds good to me. But I could make you a little cheeky cocktail instead. What are you going to make for me? I might make my um, Abilicious. Can we... Something that I haven't probably... That mentioned, but that you didn't make that up. That's that's you stole that. Yeah, from I did. A man. It's uh, on the you, menu. You stole in, it at, in the hotel in Dubai. Yeah, but someone was making at the airport these cocktails, and you went, oh, "What this is called?" He said, "I've just made this up." You stole it off him and called it an Abilicious. No, because I am. Um, <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> it's definitely true. No, the guy there was a Jack Daniels stall in the airport, yeah. and I added my own things to just spice it up a bit. Okay, we'll go with that. But anyway, you've called, you called it an Abilicious, told everyone to do buy about it, and now they put it on the menu. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's an Abilicious now, anyway. It's that, a great that drink. That fella's dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, two shots of Jack Daniels, one shot of Cointreau, lime and lemonade. You're going to make it for me. And that's an Abilicious. Okay, we actually have got a bar here, and it's, it's actually... Peter Crouch sized. You might not be able to see on the other side. <laughs> but I'm going to make an Abilicious and... Uh... It's been nice going over um, all the places we've been. Like, we've had some amazing holidays. We've had some great times. And, um, you know, we're very blessed that we've been in a situation where we've been allowed to to go to these these great places. And uh, we've had some eventful times and it's nice going back over them. There's some funny stories in there. Um, well, that's, that's, and hopefully like, there's many more. That's like the main part of this part, you know. We've done so many amazing things together and we're so lucky to have done that. And But it's not often you sit down and talk about it. We're I agree. Just go, I... going over all our funny stories have been... It is like a therapy in a way, isn't it? Because we've, we've laughed all afternoon mm. talking about all the times we've had together and it's amazing. Like, you know, growing up, I think I only went to like Tenerife about three times. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we're, we're lucky that we get to go to these places and... Yeah, there's plenty more. I just wonder what the next few few years will bring. Some of the stories of holidays are just... But you know, I think um, this pod wouldn't be anything without the listeners. These stories that they write <laughs> in with are just hilarious. So and it really makes us laugh. And we're glad that we can give people advice. And I, lo yeah, so I love hearing the listeners' stories and keep them coming. Yeah, this podcast will be nothing without the uh, stories that you send in. So uh, keep sending them in on uh, social media, on our uh, website, wherever you can find us. Uh, send us some, uh, some questions in because they make it. <laughs> <laughs>